Welcome back to our 11th Hashtag Hire Me 2022 guest panel speaker series this year, hosted by bcjobs.ca. So my name is Chelsea. As you can see uh, on my screen, I just realized I only put my first name, but uh, um, my name is Chelsea Sweeney, and I'm the director of events at BC Jobs, and, uh, and I'll be your host for today's panel. So for those of you who are new to these panels, every month we have um, three special guest speakers join us for a little Q&A and what's new in their organizations and to talk a bit about hiring and the job market in BC. We are proud that BC Jobs is Western Canada's biggest online jobs board and to stay in the loop about companies who are hiring, you can also check out our Innovators podcast to learn more about what industry leaders are saying about the job market. So before we get started here today, I want to encourage our audience to type your questions for the panelists into the chat box at, at any point. Whenever you have a question that comes to you, feel free to type it into the chat box and we'll get to your questions during the Q&A. So I'll make sure to go through the chat box and ask, um, uh, ask the speaker to come and uh, ask their question on screen just to make it a little bit more personal. And, uh, and then uh, today we will also be offering a job candidate pitch event right before we start our audience Q&A. So this is where uh, three candidates from our audience will be selected for a 30 second pitch to tell our guest speakers about yourself and your you know, experience, it could be student experience, work experience. And then the person with the best pitch will then receive a 30 minute resume consultation with BC Jobs. Um, and this will be not like I'm picking people from the audience, but you can nominate yourself in the chat. So no pressure. <laughs> Um, so when we get to this part of the panel today, I'll provide some instructions on how to nominate yourself to give a short pitch. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to get some introductions going here. So I'm going to pass the virtual mic over to Laura Rini, Strategic Talent Attraction Specialist at BC Transit. Laura, it's a pleasure to have you with us today, and we'd love to know more about yourself in BC Transit. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Chelsea. I really appreciate it. Um, any event these days where we can talk about our business is amazing because of the labor market. We're always looking for great people. So um, I've been with BC Transit for 10 years. Um, I actually started in the operations division working at night and um, BC Transit helped pay for my education through SFU. And I got my degree through there um, with their ex scholarship. They offer scholarships every year to their employees and you can put your name in. And um, so I got that, so I'm pretty excited. So I've been in, in HR for eight years now. I started just as the assistant and I've worked my way up. So that was my favorite thing about BC Transit is that they're always willing to um, invest in their employees, which is great and promote from within. So um, we have a pretty large HR department now. We call it people and culture, so I should stop saying HR. But um, when I first started, there was like six of us and now there's 30. So it's nice wow. to see our new executive um, values, the people and culture division and the partnership that we can provide them and our stakeholders. So BC Transit does operate, I think it says in our little blurb, but we operate in 130 communities throughout the province of British Columbia, everywhere but at Metro Vancouver, which is our partners, um, TransLink Coast Mountain Bus that run the greater Vancouver system. So put it in perspective, they have 5,000 bus drivers and we have 500. So um, because we don't hire the bus drivers for the systems throughout the province, they're run by an operating company. It's a a business model where we every few years we put out a contract, people bid on it, and the winner is a in a three-way partnership with us, the municipality who requested the service, and then the company who won the contract. So the public doesn't know any better. BC Transit Bus, BC Transit Uniforms, um, BC Transit Bus Stops, but it's not actually our employees that are driving the buses. So mm -hmm. we only actually hire 500. So out of Victoria at our head office is where all the bus drivers um, that we hire are. And so our head office is in Victoria. We do offer 100% remote, virtual, uh, hybrid, and then there is some roles that have to be in the office. So we're, we're expanding where our um, employees live and play and work. So that's exciting because it's really opened things up for us. So Hopefully that's enough of an intro. I'm sorry, I never stop talking. <laughs> no, no, that was perfect. I, I grew up taking BC Transit, so I'm very yes. familiar with the company, but I didn't know that they do pay for, for education. Like you mentioned, they just pay for your mm -hmm. education. That's amazing. That's really yeah, cool. Really cool. 
All right, and next up we've got uh, Rajbir Wallace, Senior Talent Acquisition Specialist um, over at Best Buy. And uh, so Rajbir, thank you so much for joining us today and we'd love to know more about you and Best Buy. Thank you, Chelsea, and uh, myself, Raj Birwala, and I have a quite a journey with Best Buy in terms of like a learning growth. Um, I have overall 12 plus years of experience at Best uh, overall, but at Best Buy, I have four, roughly four and a half years of experience. I'm, I am located in Toronto, so you can see how diverse in terms of geography we are. I started in a distribution center and I learned everything from there. And then there was a job in corporate and they asked me, oh, would you be interested to work for a corporate? I'm like, why not, right? <laughs> then I started working for corporate and there I have touched uh, all kind of a portfolio, be it into technology, be it into data, be it into like um, finance, accounting, HR, um, legal, everything. Currently, my main focus is into our core CHQ portfolio, which include finance, accounting, marketing, and legal. In terms of like Best Buy, I really feel proud to be working with Best Buy. We have around 170 stores coast to coast and around 12,000 employees working for us. We have around 1,200 employees working in a corporate and uh, we have two major distribution center. One is in Langley, which is in BC. One is in uh, Brampton, uh, Toronto. And in terms of like um, uh, Laura was mentioning about remote remote work. We also very proud to say that we have heard people, they want more work-life balance. And that's why we have done most of our job into like remote first approach, wherein we have kept like uh, uh, events like team building events more for a collaboration and brainstorming purpose, right? And uh, we um, we are considered as the most visited multi-channel retailer with over 250 million visit in store and on bestbuy.ca. I just want to share a story in terms of like, because I'm an immigrant and I know when, when I came here, the Best Buy was very first store wherein I landed and I found like uh, electronic gadgets and my phone and everything like that. And Best Buy has seen quite a journey in terms of like we used to be a future shop and now mm -hmm. we are like Best Buy, right? And in terms of like um, why we have sustained that growth and we have been consecutively nominated as uh, Canada's um, top 100 employer to work with, why we have sustained that growth because we, we are very pro proactive. We mm -hmm. Have identified gap and we started working on that, right? Be into technology. And our vision is that we, we believe technology is amazing and we aspire to enhance our customer life through technology anywhere, anytime. That is our vision for that. That's all from me. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Rajveer. And last but not least, we've got uh, Shreya Segal, Senior Talent Acquisition Partner from Thinkific. Shreya, great to have you on the panel today. And please tell us a bit about yourself and Thinkific. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Chelsea. I feel like I've learned so much about BC Transit <laughs> That's fun. the last 10 minutes that I've been on. Um, but my name is Shreya. That's how my name is pronounced. I'm a Senior Talent Acquisition Partner, as Chelsea mentioned, at Thinkific. Um, I have had a little bit more of a linear journey at Thinkific. I started at Thinkific, at Thinkific at the Talent Acquisition Specialist and then grew into that senior role. And my background has always been in Talent Acquisition. Um, uh, what Thinkific does is uh, it's an online platform for entrepreneurs to be able to create, sell, deliver, and market their courses online. Uh, a lot of things moved online three years ago when we all uh, ended up in the pandemic and in lockdowns. Um, so Thinkific saw quite a bit of growth. Um, mm -hmm. We're still not quite as big as Best Buy and BC Transit. <laughs> we are just under 400 employees. It's still a tiny company, but um, a lot bigger than when I first started. We were, I think I was employed over 190, maybe I, maybe under that, um, but I was around there. It was definitely less than 200 people and we've doubled in the last two years and I've been there for that growth. Um, primarily, uh, I take care of technical uh, recruitment at Thinkific, but over the last few months in Europe, I've been taking care of everything from shared services, customer service, or customer success or support, and everything in between, and then also taking care of some projects uh, and some uh, fun things that I've launched that I will talk about a little bit later today as well. <laughs> Sweet. Wow, that's really impressive. You've doubled in size in two years. That's a lot of onboarding. <laughs> A whole lot of recruitment, a lot of interviews, and a lot of onboarding. 
Thanks so much for telling us about yourself, Shreya. Uh, and now that we know our panelists a bit better, I've got a few of my own questions that I'm going to start us off with before we move over to our pitch event and our audience Q&A. So these next questions are geared more towards like what's new at your companies for 2022 or the fall of 2022, I should say. And uh, but I've thrown in a, a couple of questions under the theme of uh, access and diversity, which can go many different directions. So I'll start off with Rajbir. Best Buy, as you mentioned, is a multinational retailer of technology, entertainment products, and services with a commitment to growth and innovation, and with a staggering 12,000 employees across Canada. That's huge. Um, so how does Best Buy support access to programs and initiatives and encourage the career growth of your employees? Um, thank you for this question, Chelsea. Uh, so at Best Buy, we built an ecosystem that allow us to better understand our people and develop them in meaningful way uh, so that we can position them in the right place, in the right job and at the right time, right? Uh, for that, we have created several programs to support, uh, which include like talent review and career conversation, which are discussions at least twice a year that are forward focused on what an employee wants to develop in and accomplish, that we have internal learning and development courses, which which are available to all employees covering things like from hard skills to soft skills, from leadership development to inclusion and diversity and wellness, which is like a very hot topic these days among employees. So we have wellness topics. And then we have a mentorship and sponsorship program, which is mainly crafted for our female, uh, female employees to assist mm -hmm. them in their career journeys. We have also professional coaching programs. So these professional coaches are available to our corporate leaders and full-time mm -hmm. employees in technology, digital retail, and e-com, right? So no matter what is your career aspiration, uh, what you are focusing on, we will empower you to grow into who you want to become by, by having these special programs. Love to hear that. That's awesome. My next question is for Laura. So BC Transit is British Columbia's provincial transit authority uh, responsible for transporting 58 million passengers every year, operating 88 transit systems in 130 communities across British Columbia outside of Greater Vancouver, which you mentioned is on a different system. Um, and you're all about accessibility being in transportation. So my question for you is, how do you promote accessibility within and outside the workplace? So this is a loaded question. So I, I did ask you for clarification because there's so many different things, but um, I have to say that when I first started at Transit, we were not very accessible. Um, we didn't have a, we didn't have like wheelchair ramps or um, elevators. So that like that type of accessibility has been amazing. They did a whole review. We just did, um, we just got in the president's group, which is a group that recognizes folks that um, make, the workplace is accessible. So mm -hmm. they actually just featured us in a video. So whether it be you need, um, you're a service person and you need a special type of hearing device to hear on the radio, because there's some people that can't hear on a, a two-way radio, the elevators have been put in place. Like we took around my colleague, um, Adam's in a wheelchair. So they just said, you take us around and tell us everything that's wrong and we will fix it so that it's works for you. So that side of thing is awesome. Our workforce, we work 22 hours a day, seven days a week. Our, so it's really hard to connect with everybody. So like mm -hmm. accessibility to programs and learning. So we have an online learning platform that we called, that we launched this year called MyPath. So it has courses of anything you can think of, whether it's customer service, conflict resolution, all the like Microsoft's office programs. We also have just loaded in a bunch of ones on diversity and inclusion. And um, we're all taking those, um, some reconciliation courses. So those are really great. We have an EDI committee, so employee diversity, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion committee. And so they're starting to um, add a whole bunch of volunteers like actually too many for one committee. So they had to stop it, but they, um, each month a video comes out featuring an employee and like their background and, and what they love about their job and how it supports them. And you kind of get to see them, they follow them around in their day to day. So uh, I can't share them because they're just for internal purposes, but mm -hmm. they're so uplifting and like really neat to get to know people. Mm -hmm. Like this is going to, this is really cheesy, but we had, um, 
So I used to help hire all the drivers. Now I'm doing mostly mecha uh, mechanics and, and admin roles, but we had these two Syrian refugees that came by to one of my job application days. So that is one thing we do is we find folks, um, especially when they're new to Canada, will struggle a little bit applying for our jobs. So we open up our boardroom once a week for two hours um, and it's first come first serve and it will help you apply, help you with your resume, answer any of your questions. So just to make it as easy as possible. But I met these two brothers and they were amazing, but they their English wasn't good enough to be able to pass like this comprehensive driving test and mm -hmm. to be able to give passengers um, in, like directions and things mm -hmm. like that. So we worked with them. We got them into a role where there was um, just filling the bus up with gas, putting it through the bus wash. There wasn't have to be a lot of communication. And then slowly through the last couple of years, English has been gotten so phenomenal. We moved them over to the transit operator role. And then Justin Trudeau came to our location when they were announcing um, money for electric buses and they went over and they met him and they started crying because of the Syrian refugee program that we they had put on and like the whole room was bawling their eyes out because it was he was just like you changed our lives and it was just like all those things trying to make it as easy as possible for people to apply and like maybe what they want isn't the role that's going to work right away but like we'll get you there so we just need to be really um just stay in touch with them and help them and answer all their questions. So every time I see these two brothers now, they're just like, we can be way across the big working yard and we're, we're always like running over to say hi to each other. They'll, I'll never forget them and they'll probably never forget me. So just those things that, I don't know, make it all worth it, right? Being a recruiter. So it was pretty cool. And so just, that's what we do. We try to like continually improve if we're not doing it right let's look at what we're doing wrong and we'll fix it so it's a very progressive company I would say compared to the old days it's it's been a real change culture shift in the last 10 years so it's I'm proud to work there that's for sure oh that's wonderful to hear I love that heartwarming story you just shared about the two brothers your slogan could be you know changing lives step by step yeah there you go <laughs> wonderful okay my next question is for Shreya um, think Epic makes it easy for thousands of, of independent experts and companies to quickly create and deliver stunning online courses on their own sites. What does accessibility mean to the company culture of Think Epic? Yeah, that's a big loaded question there as well. <laughs> um, accessibility. So with Think Epic, kind of taking a step by uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, all of those things are integral for creating inclusivity at our company as a whole. Um, a lot of it is built into our culture, but I took a step back, I'm going to take a step back and try to break this down into two areas, internal and external. Um, so internally, there's a few ways that we support accessibility, starting with the recruitment process. Um, we offer a ton of flexibility in terms of interview booking, um, getting those interviews scheduled. Um, you know, things can happen last minute, especially with all of us working from home. Uh, childcare can fall through, emergencies mm -hmm. can come up. So we have a ton of flexibility there with uh, interview booking. But above that as well, um, we make sure to provide accommodations as well for interviews. Um, a lot of our, some of our interviews are on video, some of them are off video. So we give that option to be video on or off. Anything else in terms of accessibility that candidates need, that's something that we always make sure that we provide. Um, and then as well, we send a uh, blog, we have these blog posts that have been created, um, not by me, by some very <laughs> intelligent people uh, within our people team that are great writers uh, around what to expect exactly from a hiring process, from the questions that we'll be asking and laying out all of the steps in the process, which um, candidates always say that that's really helps them with, um, you know, when it comes to mental health issues, like having anxiety around interviewing and just having those nerves and just helps with a lot of that, knowing exactly what they're coming into and helping with prep. That's one part of it. Um, in terms of internally with our thinkers, uh, which is what we call our employees, um, within the office uh, uh, itself, we have all of our uh, signage, iPads for uh, logging in and then signing in, candles, everything within um, the American uh, Americans with Disabilities Act guidelines for height. I wanted to make sure I was getting that right. <laughs> um, and then our building itself has a uh, wheelchair access and um, every floor has has um, at least one door that's accessible via each wheelchair. Um, 
And then um, we do also provide accessible equipment um, for folks that need it at home. So Thinkific mm -hmm. does have an office in Vancouver. 30% um, of our team is distributed across Canada. And even though we have an office in Vancouver, um, not everybody uses it. We have mm -hmm. the option to be working from home or working in office. So uh, when it comes to home office setup as well, um, Thinkific does provide budget for doing that. And, uh, you know, like if you need an accessible keyboard or if you need an accessible mouse or, or any, any equipment really, Thinkific does support with um, providing that as well, working from home. Um, in terms of meetings as well, um, we always have live captions on on all of our meetings, um, on all of our videos as well that we're sharing mm -hmm. in huddles. Um, it, and then uh, for our, uh, our large meetings as well, we always have an ASL interpreter. We do have an individual um, that is hard of hearing that works at Thinkific, so we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to support them as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's internal. <laughs> uh, take a step back and zoom out and look at the product as well. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the, the product, um, our whole mission is to um, bring education and help entre entrepreneurs um, take their ideas and what they know and share it with as many people as they possibly can and doing it online. Um, so obviously we wanna make sure that our product is also accessible. Um, so. Um, we just recently did an audit, uh, a, an audit of our product in terms of looking at accessibility and have identified a few things that we're doing really well and a few things that we can do well. Um, Laura was saying there's uh, a lot that has been done, but a lot that you can continue to iterate on and uh, improve. Um, so uh, a lot of that is something that we're looking at as well. Um, our design processes all incorporate um, accessibility principles. We have uh, accessibility champions uh, within our team as well that are advisors for our engineering product and design teams to advise them and educate and, uh, them on how when we're building new features, we can make them more accessible. Um, a few of the things that we already have in our product is, um, I, I talked about captions earlier in our meetings, but also having captions, um, the ability to add captions to uh, videos that course creators are sharing within uh, their their school or their um, their course uh, on Thinkific, um, adding alternative audio as well to text, adding alt text to images as well. So a lot of those things that we're looking at. I did a lot of talking there, but I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was fantastic to know. And you just made me realize I didn't put closed captionings on our uh, panel today. And I keep meaning to, and I keep forgetting. So shame on me. I need to get better at this. Um, I, I was going to say, I love that you call your colleagues thinkers. That's such a great name. That's such a great term. <laughs> We've All right, little babies that uh, come into uh, come into Thinkific as well, Thinkaroos. <laughs> Thinkaroos. Oh my goodness, that's really cute. That's really cute. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back over to Rajbir with my next question. Um, how would you describe the company culture of Best Buy in terms of bringing employees together from different cultures and backgrounds? Uh, so at Best Buy, we welcome people from all background to workshop and do business with. Uh, we are very passionate about providing a wor work environment which is welcoming, safe, and inclusive for all. Diversity and inclusion are a journey and we always learning and there is always more to be done. So to support this, we have certain programs like we encourage open and honest conversation about all topics. So it is through like Microsoft team, we have a forum made there. So people come there, they can share different like articles and ideas and we read about it. And we, if we have any comment, we, we reach out to them, right? We represent all different type of people in our advertising, our media stories and on our career side. If you recently, uh, got a chance to look at our website you will see it's like all cute cool like these are actual Best Buy employee who are featured in our Best Buy career page in our diversity inclusion page and everything like that. So we, like our team marketing team did, did a superior work over there and actually represented Best Buy people, right? To show that we welcome diverse people. And we have a virtual random coffee chat. That's very interesting. And that's one of my favorite because in that way, you just, uh, registration happen every month uh, at the start of every month wherein you have to pick 
like any random person and you connect with that person and you know get engaged with that person in terms of like what do you do just to break that uh to know more about the people especially it's very important at virtual world mm -hmm. and uh, we also host continue the conversation session wherein uh some guest speakers they come and it could be like employee or guest speaker they come and they share stories on topic ranging from racism to pride to root to truth and reconciliation right and i i know that uh, since very long our tagline used to be uh just belong here and be you here and i truly believe that you can be here in like who you are you can present yourself you can see that um we have that kind of a culture at best buy wherein you will feel inclusive like all the leaders hiring managers employees they are well educated about diversity and they are very welcoming here well, that's fantastic to hear. So with these virtual coffee hours that you just uh, mentioned, does like the CEO ever participate in that? Like uh, people in high positions chat with, so, with anyone? So it is like a virtual and in terms of like what, like, it's totally depend upon them. I remember mm -hmm. I connected to someone uh, from US, right? Mm -hmm. And oh. it was really great too, because we have a huge team at Best Buy mm -hmm. HR and I connected with that. I connected with her after in LinkedIn and she was like a very senior person. And I got to learn a lot from her in terms of like mentorship and she mm -hmm. like what programs they are doing. So like from my personal experience, yes, senior leadership also participate in that. That sounds fantastic. And what a great way to, you know, network across, yes. you know, two different countries. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that is. Awesome. So my next question is, we're going to go back over to Laura here. So inside hiring at BC Transit, how do you encourage the hiring of job candidates with diverse backgrounds? Well, we, we looked into doing, um, the first thing we tried to do was doing, um, screening where they can't see I can't even think of the word right now my brain is gone um where you can't see their name or mm -hmm. um, where they're from because obviously hiring managers say they don't have bias but they do um so if we could take out their name and like their location um but the system we just got doesn't support that so mm -hmm. we do make sure we screen all of the applications and only give them sort of the top 10 to go through and that has helped us keep any of their bias out because it doesn't mm. we're not affected by the role we just look at the resumes but the main thing I'd say we did recently is we took out the minimum qualifications like in the job description they're probably still in there but in our ads that we put out we don't put in like minimum degrees or minimum education because a lot of people have those things just in different ways mm. so like just because you like some certifications aren't transferring over when you move to Canada. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter to us. You have the experience and we can, tr are you trainable and willing and open to learn like our company and our ways? So that's been a huge um, undertaking. It's been really, really successful. The amount of like just diverse, like there is so many nationalities and so many different walks of life. Now at BC Transit, when I started, we were we have probably almost doubled it. It's took 10 years, not two. Um, but um, Victoria, like it was a lot of Caucasian people that lived in Victoria and there wasn't mm -hmm. a lot of immigration here. So it's been great to see that people are immigrating Canada or to Victoria because they know it's really expensive to live. But mm -hmm. man, we're getting some really cool, um, just some cool people with cool stories. And it's so nice to get to know them. And we do something similar with the coffee. Where we do a call it coffee roulette and you you um go into like a team's meeting and then they just randomly assign you to someone you have 15 minutes to have coffee with them and get to know them and it's been so amazing because it's some I've always gotten people I don't know and we just like gab for 15 minutes and get to know each other but then you see them if you're at the office and and you're in a call you start to get to know people and then we also I'm an insights practitioner at work so we get to, I get to do insights with all the new folks. So I get to meet every single new employee, which is really cool for me because I love making connections. And so it doesn't have to be like ethnicity, like the diversity in who you are and your life experiences and what you bring to the table and your personality. So insights really brings that out too, like how we're each different and how we each bring value to the team and how we can support each other. Like, how do you like to be communicated to? So we really have those things front and center. Like everyone has their color energies, how they like to be communicated to. Some people don't like it absolutely would stress them out for you to call them 
out of the blue on a team's call, like they need a text mm. first, like text me, are you free for a quick team's call? Cause like their anxiety goes through the roof when all of a sudden someone's randomly calling them like, what have I do, done wrong or <laughs> this and that. So just trying to keep all of those things into our hiring practice, but also with our current employees. Like we don't want to forget once you're an employee, we want you to stay forever. So hopefully that answers your question. I'm not sure it did, but no, that's perfect. And coffee roulette sounds like a lot of fun. It kind of takes off that, that pressure from networking that we feel like, you know, you're under a lot of pressure, you know, when it comes to networking and especially for those of us who are introverted and coffee roulette just sounds like a lot of fun. sounds like a game. Yeah. Just one-on-one. So it's like the pressure of like talking in a big group is gone, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, my last question here is for Shreya. One of Thinkific's team values is strive for equality. Tell us a bit more about how Thinkific supports equality out inside and outside the workplace. Yeah, another big one. Um, <laughs> so... I'm just throwing them at you today. <laughs> That's okay, I can take them, I can answer them. Um, so just kind of taking a step back when it comes to, um, I'll, I'll speak to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. That's kind of the big umbrella that we have everything under at Thinkific. Um, a lot of it is built into our culture. Um, so uh, all of us use pronouns at work, um, whether that's in our email signatures, in our Zooms. I That was the first thing that I did when I hopped on Zoom today mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in Slack. Um, so that's something that is just built into our culture. Um, it's also uh, built into our culture to be using gender neutral pr uh, pronouns and gender neutral language. So I'll go into meetings and I'm from Calgary. So I use the word y'all a whole lot. <laughs> um, that's just my word, but people use things like folks. Um, and it's really neat. We actually, we use Slack and we actually have a bot built into Slack. Anytime somebody will use uh, something like guys, Slack will ping you and say, hey, use these words instead of guys, because that's not a neutral pronoun. Um, so a lot of those pieces are built into our culture, um, which is really awesome to see because it really encourages people to show up as they are, as who they are. And a lot of these little, little tiny things built in um, allows for people to show up as they are. But um, above that as well, we have an open culture of communication um, and radical candor. So radical candor is giving feedback um, with care in mind. So you're giving feedback to folks to help them improve and grow um, rather than finger pointing or blaming people for making mistakes. So there is a blameless culture as well. And that really helps for people to show up as who they are as well and creates a, a lot more equality. People are not afraid to speak up in meetings, share their ideas. Um, passionately debate is one of our values as well. So you'll see people with two different ideas come into a room and passionately have a debate and, you know, have, share both of their perspectives. But then at the end of the day, we'll meet, we'll leave the room with a decision that we made together, knowing that everybody got to have their voice heard before we make this decision. Um, so that's some of the other things that are built in as well. Um, within our benefits uh, as well, we make sure to include this in there as well. So um, we just added in gender affirmation surgery. We have support for mental health support up to three thousand uh, dollars, which is so very, very important, mm -hmm. especially in the last two years. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, pay equity is something that we look at as well. Um, so whoever's coming into Thinkific with the same level of experience, whether you're male, female, you're uh, Caucasian or Black or Indian, you're all getting paid the same because you're coming in with the same amount of experience and the same level of experience as well. Um, so that's something that we're super intentional about. Um, and then the last thing that I teased a little bit earlier today, um, I, I was really excited about this, but I got to help launch um, a, a diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging council. We just launched it earlier this month um, and the mandate for that council is to act as advisors um, for uh, deep, deep for short initiatives across Thinkific. Um, so different ideas that different teams might have, whether that's within uh, product accessibility, I was talking about earlier, um, diversity, lunch and learns, any of those things. There's lots of that happening as well at Thinkific. Um, they can all bring it to the council for advising and then the council will also um, look at gaps within Thinkific and help drive those forward as well from the diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging perspective and all of that of course includes accessibility as well. I did a whole lot of talking there again, so I'll stop. <laughs> Congratulations on starting this council. It sounds, what a fantastic initiative. How many people do you have on your council? 
Yeah, so we currently have eight people uh, on the council, and these are just thinkers that were nominated by other folks at Thinkific. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, an executive sponsor, um, which is our CEO slash our CEO. Both of them are coming through meetings, mm -hmm. um, taking turns being a part of that. And then uh, we have two advisors from the people team, and I'm one of those advisors. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Congrats. That's a great, great Thanks. initiative to start. Fantastic. All right. So I've come to the end of my, my little Q&A questions. So before we, we dive into questions from the audience, I'm going to go back to what I was talking about earlier uh, about the pitch candidate events. And um, so with this event, I'm just going to put in some instructions here into the chat, which I've prepped already. So for the pitch events, you can um, Nominate yourself by putting your name, location, and area of expertise into the chat here. And then um, first come, first serve, the first three people who nominate themselves will get chosen to give a short 30-second pitch about yourself, your experience, it could be your work experience, your student experience, to our panelists here today. And the person with the best pitch will get an email from me after inviting you to a 30-minute resume consultation with BC Jobs, aka me. So um, we usually do like a little resume and LinkedIn consultation, and I'll look over um, resume and see if there's any, any areas to improve uh, and save with LinkedIn. So if you want to uh, to, to get your resume looked at. Perhaps uh, you're, you'll be brave enough to speak out today. So pop your name here in the chat. Uh, you get to practice some of those rusty public speaking skills and uh, yeah, and just have some, some fun. All right, we've got our first brave soul here, Caitlin. Okay, perfect. So while the others are still, you know, thinking about nominating themselves, okay. We've got our second brave soul, fantastic. All right, we're on fire today. I'm gonna to invite Caitlin um, to join us on screen. So, okay, you've got your camera on, fantastic. So feel free to unmute yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. We're looking forward to your pitch, Caitlin, welcome. Yeah, hi there. Um, so my name's Caitlin. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Victoria. I completed a social science degree with a major in sociology. Um, with my degree came a lot of knowledge surrounding the functioning of society and a lot of focus on um, social issues, including like capitalism, inequality, media, gender relations, a lot of stuff like that, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, a lot of my work experience has been within the service sector, especially in restaurants. Um, I've also worked for a third party company that worked with um, some major nonprofit organizations. Uh, my most recent role was actually working at the University of Victoria in their financial aid office. So I helped students access funding for their education by interpreting provincial and federal policies. So like finances can be a really significant barrier when it comes to mm -hmm. education. So it felt really good to help students um, navigate those challenges. Um, now that I'm actually done school, I am looking for a role that I can apply some of the knowledge and critical thinking skills that I've developed throughout my degree. Um, I just spent the last four years just learning about all the issues and challenges we face as a society. So it'd be really awesome to work for a company that is working towards resolving some of these issues either directly through their work or like a byproduct. Fantastic, great pitch. Uh, maybe one of our panelists here has a, has a follow-up question for you. Well, and maybe while they're thinking of a question, I'll ask you a question, Caitlin. What was one of the most uh, challenging projects you worked on in your studies? Really good question. <laughs> they were all they all require like what something we developed in my degree is called the sociological imagination mm -hmm. like lens that you look at the world through. Um, I'd have to say one of my most challenging was was actually in a criminology course that I took in my fourth year and we had to essentially link like a case study to like a, a theory, like theoretical mm -hmm. understanding. And it was actually really challenging for my group because um, the case study was, okay, so the project <laughs> was um, focused on indigenous issues and we had to link it to this case study, but there wasn't actually links that weren't like stereotyped so mm -hmm. we had to kind of work around that and figure out a way to you know successfully complete the assignment without being bad essentially um which was really difficult and I think that our professor kind of realized what she did at the end mm -hmm. but we managed to get a really great grade and we started a really great conversation within the classroom um 
about, you know, talking about these sensitive subjects. So that was probably one of my more challenging um, projects for sure. It sounds like quite the learning experience. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know if any of the panelists here have a have a follow up question for you. Yeah, I'm curious, Caitlin. That sounds super tricky. As a result of that, was there any changes made, or did you share any feedback? Or yeah, I'm just curious about what happened after that. Yeah, for sure. So I think the main thing that happened. It, this was closer to the end of the class. It was like one of our final projects. So I don't really know what happened after, as I graduated since then. But um, just in that class in general, after we had our presentation, um, where we talked about a lot of difficult issues, including like residential schools and reconciliation, um, we really opened up the conversation in that classroom um, to talk about those sensitive issues in in like a way without judgment, because a lot of people are still learning. We are all still learning. It's a learning process, right? Mm -hmm. So really, we just kind of talked about a way to discuss it in an open, non-judgmental environment where there's room for error and there's room for kind of be like, oh no, it's actually better to say it this way, or we're talking about more so this. So it was just really, we opened the discussion up and, um, our presentation went like probably 30 minutes over what it was supposed to because of this, but it's not a bad thing to open up those discussions for sure. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. Great job, Kaylin. Thanks for pitching yourself today. And our next uh, pitch candidate who nominated themselves, um, and I, I, please excuse me, I'm probably going to pronounce your name wrong and please correct me, Ogo Begwu Uche. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Uche? Yeah, Uche, and you did Perfect. very well. Okay, um, welcome, welcome. Um, glad to have you here today, and we're looking forward to your 30-second pitch about yourself. Yeah, okay, thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name is Uche, and I'm new to Canada. Um, my background, I've worked in the commercial banking and financial technology space, um, delivering solutions for organizations as a product as a project manager, and Scrum Master, um, I would say that's the most challenging and rewarding um, experience I've had really has been working with a financial technology company where we transitioned from traditional project management to uh, an agile Scrum framework, which produced a value, um, increased value of about 50% for the organization. And going forward, this was, um, the solution we used, uh, the methodology we used in delivering value for the organization and for customers. Um, yeah, and I would say um, this has been quite um, an interesting uh, session and thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us, great pitch. Um, so my follow-up question for you is, what would your dream role be? Yeah, so I'm really hopeful that I'll get um, something within the Scrum, um, manager, Scrum Master role, um, product, project manager, Scrum Master roles within um, a company that's, ad, that's adopting Agile to um, the way they work. Yeah, whether it's in e-commerce or it's in the retail sector, I'm really open and I'm open to new adventures and new opportunities really, yeah. Awesome. And maybe uh, Rajveer or Laura has a, has a follow-up question I, for you. I have a follow-up question for you all. For sure, you are a brave soul, like, because you are pitching in in front of, like, a panel. So my question to you is, because when you were introducing yourself, you said you are new to the country, right? So what are, like, three skill sets you think, because you are new to the country and you might have seen, okay, I worked as a scrum master, I worked into an agile environment. What are the three skill set you think? you have learned or like brushed on like when you come came to Canada? Okay, yeah. So my communication skills, I've taken a short course on um, workplace communication here in Canada mm -hmm. and understanding how to communicate more effectively with people here. Uh, it's a whole different mindset coming from um, Nigeria where I um, was born in and understanding how communication should be more effective here. And also I've done some courses on um, skilled agile with um, a, a, a touch on facilitation. So it's it helped my, my facilitation skills 
um, when working with cross-functional teams. I would say those are the two major mm -hmm. ones, communication, workplace communication here in Canada, and um, my facilitation skill in Agile, yeah. I think those are really important skill set, right? You have worked on courses taking on Agile and working on your communication skill set. And uh, for sure, uh, just for you, uh, because we are very uh, big in terms of technology, digital side also, as you mentioned, you have experience into financial sector doing those scr Scrum, uh, you know, worked on a different project related to Scrum and uh, Agile work environment. So I will ask you if you can connect with me on LinkedIn and you can go to our best by career site look at the job opportunities we are hiring and i can for sure uh let you know where are you at your career journey in terms okay. of like the job duties we have mentioned and how you can you know get a job and uh, for sure i can provide you some valuable insight there absolutely absolutely i would love to connect with you sure thank you fantastic that's what these events are all about <laughs> All right, great job pitching yourself, Uche. Awesome. Our uh, third brave soul is Rehan. Rehan, um, feel free to turn on your camera and unmute uh, yourself, and we'd love to hear Hello. your pitch. Great. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I came to Canada sometime in 2019. I did my bachelor's in business administration while I was in India. Uh, further to which, I finished my global business management uh, postgraduate diploma with NIC in Canada. And I've been working with CIBC as a customer representative in 2019, um, finished a certification for mutual funds, got promoted as a financial service representative. Further to which, uh, based on uh, the sales, um, I shouldn't say sales, based on the numbers that I had, I was again promoted within a span of seven months to an associate financial advisor. And yeah, uh, in my personal time, I like watching cricket and just relaxing and watching anime. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Great pitch. And congratulations on moving up so quickly in your role. That's awesome. Um, perhaps uh, maybe Laura has a follow-up question for you. I'll, I'll give Laura a chance to ask a question today. Sure. Um, so we have a large financial department at BC Transit because we're, although we only hire the bus drivers for Victoria, we're doing the finances and IT and marketing for the whole province. So our head mm -hmm. office is quite large. Um, so we have like the accounts payable section receivables, but we also have budgeting and forecasting. So we have government money that we get mm -hmm. or we're told we're going to get. And then mm -hmm. we need to determine who's going to get it and budget and forecast what that looks like. Right. What area do you of finance of those two areas would you like better? Or is uh, there a role say, of transit? I would say a combination of both of them. Uh, I'm actually preparing for my financial risk management exam coming up in May. Mm -hmm. And further to which I also plan to get my CFA charter down the line. So forecasting okay. and budgeting would really suit my roles. And that's really most uh, kind of a role that I'm working towards as a junior financial analyst or towards a financial analyst yeah. or towards a risk manager. So that's great because we also have the, I forgot we have the capital um, capital assets we get capital, management. We get capital money yeah. as well that is run completely separate from the other financial department. So, all right, we'll keep your eye on our website. They, um, we get our fiscal year end is March 31st. So April 1st, all of a sudden, our, it's far away, but it'll come up quick enough is uh, there'll be a lot of jobs posted in April. There'll be tons in between, but that's also a great time to take a look if you finish some of those courses up and things like that. And again, same as Raj Beer said, like all of you feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you see anything, one of our postings that you have questions about, um, happy to answer those for you. I have something to add, uh, Rehan, thank you so much for introducing you. And uh, right now we are at MTH, like make to holiday season. So we had, I know, a couple of opportunity for into financial analysts, like senior FAs and financial analysts. But right now we have put on a hold. By January, I'm hoping we would be reopening those roles because all leadership they are focused on make to holiday because it's a big time for us September to December so we are all energy is focused on that and <laughs> pertaining to the economy right now so we we have this we, mm -hmm. like our leaderships are very thoughtful in terms of like because we have seen some company they have rescinded offer or like you know co-op or something like that so we are very mindful in that and that's why we have put those positions on a hold so please keep an eye on our website also and I, I am hoping because I am the one who are looking after finance and accounting roles so I am hoping right. by January we would be able to start hiring for these roles so yeah 
Just keep an eye on that and connect with me on LinkedIn, right? I'll, I'll keep looking forward to words. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Caitlin, Uche, and Rehan for pitching yourselves today and keep an eye on your email inbox uh, either later today or tomorrow for an email from me inviting you to a resume consultation. So thank you so much for those wonderful pitches. And from here, we'll move into uh, general questions or any kind of questions from our audience. So if you have a question, feel free. You can type your question into the chat um, or you could go on the bottom of your screen. You'll see a little smiley face uh, that says reactions. And if you click on that, you will see the raise hand button. So you can click on that button and raise your hand and then kind of first come first serve. I'll just pick um, the first person who raises their hand. Okay, fantastic. So we've got uh, Rehan, hand okay. raise, excellent. Uh, go ahead and ask so, your question. So my question uh, would be, as we are looking to transition into a financial analyst role, most of the job offers or job postings that I see online require experience of around three to five years, which uh, I lack on my end. So what are the ways that a candidate can, you know, cover up for the lack of experience and how should we communicate to that uh, employers? Chelsea, I'll take this. Sure, go for it. Yeah. So like at Best Buy, to be very frank, the very important requirement for this role is someone being into financial analyst law, someone who is great in communication, presenting those reports to the leadership. So these are the skills that you have already. Right. And in terms of like what kind of a, like how good are you in Excel? And I, I believe like based on your experience and like we do a test and we will see um, like we will grade you based on your Excel test like and we will provide you. So uh, like for my junior analyst, uh, financial analyst role. I don't need anyone with three to five years of experience. I consider someone even fresh graduate, someone who is great on Excel, have done like some, uh, you know, uh, visualization, has experience in visualization tool, let's say Power BI or Tableau like that. I will consider that person into like an entry level role. And from there, let's say you are like, okay, I have done this, I have done that, and I can grow into the organization and we see you are sure showing that, uh, you know, uh, what you kind of that uh, experience and you can apply and you can ask, hey, uh, I think I am eligible for a second level and you can go into that level afterwards. So it totally depends upon what you are bringing, basic skill set, your Excel, your uh, tools and techniques you have worked on, that would be the basic requirement to enter into this uh, role. Right. Uh, so if I do some courses on Udemy, that could showcase my uh, experience with Excel. Will that work? Because I don't use Excel at my workplace. Uh, for these role, Excel and presentation, it could be anything like data visualization. So maybe you are using right. Microsoft PowerPoint, you are using advanced, like as I mentioned, Power BI or Tableau. So these are very important for financial analysts. Apart from that, if you have experience in budgeting, mm -hmm. forecasting and variance analysis, right? So that would be for sure we would be looking. But if it is an entry level position, yes, Odemi, and you can practice on your own also in Excel because we would be evaluating you. We would be sending you an excel test and we'll mm -hmm. see how you did it it's it is like time sensitive like 30 mm -hmm. minutes and then yeah oh great thank you no problem okay great question i, I don't know if anyone else um shreya or laura wanted to uh add on to rehan's question yeah i feel like we did a really good job of highlighting a lot of things but I think the only thing that I would add on is really amplify some of your other um, skills that would transition well into this role as well. Um, so Rashmi was saying, uh, just having those years of experiences and everything, there is a lot of other things like communication skills, presentation skills that play into those roles. So highlighting those is, uh, is always great. And don't stop trying. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, thank you. thank you so much. All right, our next question comes from Randy Segu. And they've got a really interesting question. Randy, did you want to um, join us on screen and, and ask your question to our panelists? Hello, everyone. It's, um, well, as you can see from the picture now, I am an older gentleman. So, um, and so far out of the three employers that are on here, uh, two of them I did apply for and I got ghosted. So uh, is there ageism involved? And I was actually recently, I graduated from the Palette Skills uh, uh, Sales Cap, 
And uh, so I was trying to get into some sort of a sales type of a job. But, um, and uh, like I said, when I've been on around, around computers for basically most of my life, I've been on computers since uh, back in the, you know, early 90s, when the first websites came out, right? So I'm quite technically quite uh, trained on that part. But it seems like everybody just wants to like I found out through that palette skills is that I found out that basically there were 17 of us in the class and everybody that was below the age of 40 got hired on and there were mm -hmm. four of us that were in that in the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. didn't even get called for anybody didn't even get mm -hmm. didn't even get a any kind of a, just totally ghosted mm -hmm. and uh, so what what is the, what's the best way to deal with that how do you do that First of all, I'm sorry oh. that you're having this experience, but I'll, I'll pass you over to Laura. Um, I think Laura I'll, has. Yeah, I'll do my best to answer that. Um, that's a tough one because the, the manager, hiring manager should absolutely not have that bias. And that's why mm -hmm. in our people and culture have definitely started doing the pre-screens for everybody and just giving them the top candidates. But resumes doesn't give away age whatsoever. Like if you don't only have to put the last 10 years experience, you don't need to go back mm -hmm that far because we're really only looking sort of at your past 10 and a cover letter is a great way to some people don't love them but I am obsessed with them I love someone to tell their story and brag about themselves and soft skills are so important to us because we are more we want you to have the qualifications but we really are looking for fit and um and willingness to learn and be trained um the way that we want to do it but like like, like just for the bus driver role, which is one I have for a lot, like there's people are always like, is there an age limit? It's like, no, do you want to drive a bus? I'll hire you. It's fine. <laughs> um, and so like some of our drivers, I just hired a guy the other day who was 67. Um, he just was bored in retirement. So I was like, come on over, I'll take you. <laughs> um, so I definitely don't see that being anything, something that happens at transit. And if it was, if we ghosted you, I'm sorry, our system is supposed to send automatic letters, um, at each stage of the event, but it's a brand new system. So now I'm curious if it's not working. So uh, I'll have to check that out, but you should get, like if you're not screened in, you should get a letter. And then if you move to the next stage, you get a letter. So there should be communication throughout the process. So my apologies if we were one of them, but as far as I can see from my team, that's not an issue whatsoever, but I know it's out there and I apologize. I am. Um... I heard a really great, um, I guess it's not, it's not quite a tip, but um, I, I was speaking with, uh, I was doing a podcast a few weeks ago with uh, uh, the CEO of a company called Pocketed and they have hiring grants on their, on their website. They're all about grants. Um, and the hiring grants were for, for youth and then also for people 55 and plus. And she was saying like one way to maybe secure a job is to go forward and say like, hey, if you hire me, your company will get money for, um, you know, hiring me, you know, and I'm in this age bracket. Um, so that's something else you could consider doing just to, um, you know, entice entice employers to take you on. Um, that that was just one tip that I've, I've heard recently. But I don't know if Shreya or Rajbir have anything to add on about maybe ageism in the workplace or how, how they screen candidates. Uh, to be very frank, Randy, like as you mentioned about the age, uh, being a recruiter, we don't have that visibility in terms of like, oh, this, and we don't, we don't encourage anyone to put the age and we don't ask pre-screen question, like if we are connecting with you, we never ask these kind of a question, uh, can you mention your age or anything like that, right? So that is not the criteria. So there is no biasness in terms of like, hey, we seen your age and that's why we have rejected this candidate based on that. Um, just to give you an example, um, I want to quote a job also. I was looking for a senior email marketing coordinator. It's a very initial, like entry level job. And there was this person, she applied for the role. And during my conversation, my pre-screen, she mentioned she's of that age. I didn't ask for that information, but she, she voluntarily informed me about she's of that age. But that was not my criteria to reject or select it. But the experience she had, she was in like some radio program and she learned the new skill set she learned how to uh, you know do best in 
email and how to like do the coordinator work and everything and she was willing to do that she had a right attitude for the job and I forwarded her a profile to our hiring manager and she reached out to the second route of an interview unfortunately she didn't get a job but it was not like an age criteria we had a better candidate from her who who had like a more relevant experience to the job but just wanted to give you an idea that we are not uh, you know declining candidate just merely based on the age number here. That's great to know. I can jump in. I think tech is one of those sectors where you don't see a lot of older people and you can see there can be a little bit of ageism. Um, I can guarantee Thinkific doesn't have that um, uh, just based on some of the pieces that I, I've seen from being here and um, from setting up some of those councils. Um, in terms of Thinkific, the way that we do hiring, and, and I'm addressing specifically Thinkific Grantee because you asked specifically that question against all three companies. Um, we do all of our hiring based on competencies-based hiring, um, so competencies for their role. Um, that's how uh, all of our interviews are assessed, all of our um, applications, everything goes through those competencies, and that's actually proven to be a method to reduce bias in, in the hiring process using competency-based uh, interviewing. My words aren't working for me today. Um, so that's something that we uh, definitely actively do. Um, we always have two folks uh, uh, within each interview step as well uh, to reduce that bias. So, uh, you know, there's uh, a recruiter and then a hiring manager. There's always two people to gut check to make sure that we're not doing that. Um, in terms of uh, ghosting and just addressing, I, I guess, your situation there, um, it's, I, I would say it's always worth it to reach back out to the recruiter um, or to the company and ask for feedback if you haven't heard back from them. If you've been rejected, even asking for feedback and learning from that feedback. Often um, what I find uh, a lot of times when I'm rejecting candidates, either they don't have the right skills uh, for the roles because we're doing competency-based hiring, um, or a lot of companies have application questions that candidates don't fill out. And those questions are so very important for us to get to know you as a human and for us to better understand your skills. And even as Especially folks that are transitioning from a different role into something new, those questions really help us understand what those transferable skills are. So I was mentioning to Rehan earlier as well to really highlight some of those transferable skills. Um, so those are some of the, the areas that I see I, I typically end up rejecting candidates or we end up rejecting candidates on our end. So um, yeah, I'm really sorry you had that experience um, and I, I hope it wasn't related to HSM, but I definitely encourage you to reach back out to um, the, the recruiter and, and, and get some feedback or ask for why you didn't get a response back. <laughs> and Laura's just saying she does at least three feedback calls a week for candidates upon request. So good, good yeah. to know. Randy, I, I absolutely hope... love it. I love when people ask for feedback because <laughs> you can't grow if you don't know. And like a lot of times it could be someone internal got the job and we are a union shop. And so I had no choice. Um, mm. And that could be the answer. Like it might not be anything to do with you. Um, it could be just that we did an internal hire that had the union um, forces our hand. Um, so unfortunately that happens quite often. And so I can give that feedback to candidates. So sorry to jump in. Yeah, I can guarantee as a recruiter, we love to help hire candidates and help them get hired. So yeah. giving feedback <laughs> is part of the role. <laughs> I hope that answers uh, your question, Randy. And Randy, I also posted a private message to you in the chat with some some more information about what I was talking about. Yeah, I got that message. It's, uh, okay. And I've already uh, had chats with a few uh, people about those kind of supplements for the salaries and all that. Mm -hmm. I've already talked to several uh, BC government uh, places and uh, so far, nothing that has really forthcoming. I mean, uh, uh, what's her name, BC Works or whatever they're called. They're basically uh, sent me off to YMCA to uh, try to help me to start my own business. Mm. Uh, and and uh, most of the people that were on that business thing were, uh, um, you know, like I've got a basically a double bachelor's degree. I've got a bachelor's in science and bachelor in, uh, uh, in business. And, uh, but the people that the YMCA was helping were people who were basically like high school dropouts. Mm. And uh, so, and then same with the supplemental uh, um, salary and all that, mm -hmm. um, the criteria that they had in there, that uh, the type of jobs they were sending me to, they were mostly labor jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's not really I'm, appropriate for no, your I'm experience not be doing and labor expertise. Jobs at my age, you know, I want to basically do kind of a job that uh, 
um, like palette skills was really good about it. Mm-hmm. I spent uh, money on it myself to uh, get into that course, to got it, get it done. And um, there were 17 employers on there. There were 17 students in there. So they were saying 95% chance of getting hired on. Well, I was a part of that 5% that didn't get hired on. So, Don't give up hope. Keep applying. Keep, I mean, job hunting is, is a really a full-time well, I'm job. On, I'm on LinkedIn and uh, people can see my profile on there. Uh, I'm quite a bit of a networker. I'm the type of person that uh, I'm very, very active on those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I do right now, currently, uh, just to keep myself busy, I am running a little bit of a kitchen design business. That's been a, ba- a little bit of a passion of mine. And uh, so basically, uh, you know, I'm not the type of person that I'm the type of person that, okay, if, uh, um, if I'm standing in an elevator, I'm going to talk to people. I'm the type of person that um, if somebody's within three feet of me, he's going to hear from me. I'm not the type to just stand there looking at the walls. I'm not that type. Right. Mm. So, and that is what most people in sales, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. They want somebody who's active and who's uh, personable and approachable. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I can, I'm always happy to have a look, you know, at your LinkedIn profile uh, anytime. I'll pop my email address in the chat uh, later on today. Um, so you can feel free to reach out to me and we can, we can connect and, you know, go over your LinkedIn or something like that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I believe we have another question from Caitlin uh, in the chat here. Uh, Caitlin, did you want to unmute yourself and uh, ask uh, your question to our panelists? Yeah, for sure. So I'm just wondering, um, as someone who's a recent graduate, like, how do I stand out among like, there's typically like 300 applicants I've seen sometimes for some jobs. Um, So I'm wondering, what are some ways I can stand out? Um, And also, like, I put a lot of effort into my cover letters, and I do lots of research on the company, and I try to figure out like how I'll align with the company and the job. So I'm wondering how much weight does a cover letter typically have? Because I find it easier to pitch myself because I don't have as many like field experience as the jobs typically request. Great question. Um, maybe Shreya, you want to take, or Laura, sure. I don't mind going. (laughs) I'm obsessed with cover letters myself. When I'm screening, I find resumes boring. I'm just trying to be, it, it's just a lot of data, right? Whereas the, I'm a, I lead with sunshine yellow and insights, if you know, insights. So I'm like, want to know the person, like that's really important to me. So I'm, when I'm recruiting, I definitely read the cover letter, but I know there's tons of hiring managers out there and recruiters that don't like them. So that's the, you, sp- you could be spending a lot of work with no return, but I still think for the chance that someone might look at it, it's really important. I also love like on a resume, if you can, the section at the very top, sort of like when you're, your objectives, even putting like sprinkling part of what you would say in your cover letter in that objectives, just to show some personality there, I really like, and going to like, we're starting to do in-person career fairs again. I've heard a ton of people write out of school because I just felt like they were a right fit. And I've, present them to the hiring manager and they're like, oh, they don't have any experience. I'm like, just give them a chance, meet with them for coffee. I promise you they're awesome. So like going to those types of events, they're starting to come up now, coming and going in person and things like that. That is a huge one for me. I know work BC, if you're on the Island still work BC as an event Thursday, um, mm-hmm. out in Langford at the church on Stuke road. I can't remember what it's called kind of across from dairy queen. Um, and that's from one to six. And that's going to, I think they have 50 employers going to that. So that would be a really worth your while to go to that one. I'll be there too, but you know, uh, there'll be lots of other people you can meet. So just networking yourself, making connections on LinkedIn. When you see a post, but ask questions like we get, cause we post everything on LinkedIn and we source through LinkedIn. So being like ticking that open, you know, open for opportunities that they, that helps come up in our search when you do that and just reaching out, um, to ask questions but you sounds like you're doing the right things it just sucks when yeah and sometimes you might have to take a role that maybe isn't quite your dream role like I did to get into transit and then eventually mm-hmm. I could work my way up so sometimes it's like just not worrying about the title and the things and knowing it's a, pro- a progression because when you get in somewhere like with transit with their pension and benefits it's worth it to stick with it and then you know you'll find your right path eventually, but just not being stuck on specific jobs. 
that was my, sorry, really long-winded answer. I apologize. No, great tip. All very important tips. And that's the thing. You want to get your foot in the door. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if, uh, if uh, Rajvir or Shreya have any, um, uh, any add-ons to that, to that question of yours, Caitlin. Sure, I can jump in. It's so funny because I'm an adult. Cover letters are okay. <laughs> so me and Laura are on opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, I think of it as application questions. So that's the reason why cover letters, I I, um, I guess, put a little bit less weight on. Um, I, I think it's you know, when you're applying for different companies, different companies have different requirements, right? Some companies will not have application questions. In that case, cover letter 100%. Yes, sell yourself in there and show your personality in there as well. I find a lot of cover letters are very like corporate and very, this this is the requirements of your job and this is exactly how I meet it. I find showing your personality really helps there. And that's where I agree with Laura there. You can read about people and really get to know them through that cover letter. But when a company has application questions, I would say spend your time a little bit more there with the application questions because that's what the recruiters are reading. Um, so that's super important. The other thing with resumes as, uh, as well, especially with new grads, I worked with quite a bit of new grads in my previous role in hiring new grads. Um, what I always say is um, highlight your accomplishments and really spell it out, whether that's through projects um, or internships that you've done or co-ops and highlight the outcomes of them. So rather than just listening at your responsibilities, like I recruited for engineering roles, um, really highlighting the, the quantifying thing around that. So doubled the company in the last two years, sounds a lot more impressive than I hired for engineering. So really um, showing that the, the impact that you made within your resume, I find that helps you get noticed as well. And then the last thing was interacting. LinkedIn is a huge source for networking. So interacting with the company on LinkedIn, whether that's through liking their posts, commenting on them, uh, connecting with the recruiter. Um, I get a lot of messages on LinkedIn where candidates will say, hey, I'm really interested in this role and then never apply for a job, apply for a job, and then message the recruiter um, to let them know, hey, I've applied for this role, just so you know, even if I don't get it, it's really great connecting with you and I'd love to stay in touch. Um, that just adds a little personal touch. Um, yeah, that was my spiel. I said a lot of things, so I'll stop talking again. <laughs> No, that's great. It's uh, another great way to stand out by sending a LinkedIn message. Uh, and don't ever underestimate the power of LinkedIn networking because that's how I have found my speakers for this panel today. So gay for LinkedIn. It's, uh, it's a really powerful place and you can meet a lot of awesome people through there. You never know where your next job opportunity will come from. <laughs> um, so I've just noticed our time. We've got, you know... A little bit of time left for one or two more questions. If anyone has any more questions from our audience here before we start to wrap up today, um, any any last questions? Now's the time. Okay. If uh, there are no last questions, maybe what we'll do, I'll open up the floor to our speakers just to add, you know. Any last words of wisdom, advice, tips, uh, any jokes? If you got any jokes, we can have those too. Um, but maybe we'll start off first with uh, Rajbir. Um, if you want to add any any last um, words for today, uh, the floor is all yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you for putting me on a spot. <laughs> but um, it was lovely interacting with you all. Just a few things uh, about Best Buy. We are actively hiring. I know at this era where in like you know, economy, we are seeing lots of layoff and all, but trust me, just go to Best Buy career <laughs> side. We are actively hiring on technology side, accounting mm -hmm. side, and then we have few roles open in data side also and marketing side also. If anyone who would like to uh, connect with me with any of those roles, please feel uh, free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, go to the job description, apply to that. It's a very simple process. Go to our career side, uh, make a work day, account and then one of the recruiter from our challenge acquisition team will reach out to you we will do a thorough phone screen we'll explain you more about the role and um, and if you are a right fit we will right away book you for a like a panel interview which is generally uh, we have like a panel for two hour uh, we want to finish it in the same day so that we can provide you a feedback within 48 hours of a time uh, time window and so it is very important and sometime it happened I have seen that 
people and especially in women it's like an article i read about that that they see that if they are not ticking all the boxes of requirement they don't apply it just don't do it if you are ticking like eight boxes and the requirement just apply it um, uh, that's a tip because i have seen that article there are some stats that showing that women don't apply if they are not ticking all the boxes right so mm -hmm. uh, don't uh, like if you think, hey, I have this skill and I would be a right fit for the role, let me apply for that and apply for that. But be mindful also, like if you are ticking only one box is out of the 10 requirement, just don't, just <laughs> don't apply, right? Uh, there should be like a good ratio um, in terms of like job requirement matching. Um, that's it. That's all uh, from my side. Thank you so much for your lasting words, Rajbir. I'll hand you over uh, to, well, I'll hand over the virtual microphone to to Laura for any uh, last words, tips, advice that she wants to share. <laughs> um, my first little tip that happens a lot is if you are going to use a cover letter, make sure you upload the right one. We get constant ones for BC Ferries um, oh, no. <laughs> and Pension Corp. So that's not us. Um, <laughs> And also we do get folks that don't read the full job description. So we'll get to do the pre-screen calls and they're like, oh, I didn't realize it was temporary or I didn't realize it was cat on call or I didn't realize this. So just be really careful to read the full job description or posting because it's got some really important information uh, in there that we, you're just gonna waste the recruiter's time. And then if you apply again on one of their roles, you know, they shouldn't, but there is going to maybe be a little bias in the back of their head, or they're going to look up your old file and see that like they applied on a role they weren't qualified for, or that they didn't realize um, was for something different. So just like attention to detail is everything. Um, you guys have the power right now. There's the, you know, there's a shortage in a lot of areas. So um, don't be scared, like Rajbir said, to apply for something if you don't tick all the boxes and women are the worst at this. If we don't see that we qualify on every single thing, we're like, if we're not good enough, we won't apply. Um, don't ever do that. If you think you're right for the role and you can highlight why, go for it. It's it's important. And there's you got a lot of wiggle room in this market right now. So um, yeah, and hit those job fairs, virtual or in person. There's, it's just so nice to network again. I, after two years of not being able to do it, it's been fantastic. So that's it. Hopefully I'll see some of you on different uh, virtual events or in person, maybe Caitlin. Thanks so much, Laura. Over to Shreya for any last words or advice or tips that you want to share with everyone. Uh, thanks, Chelsea. I haven't been to an in-person job fair in so long. It just feels crazy. <laughs> same, same. Um, <laughs> well, Laura's reminding me those exist still. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think Greg, Rhea, and Laura both covered a lot of really great points here. Um, my best advice, honestly, is uh, truly be yourself. It sounds really cheesy, but make sure that you show your personality. It's, um, it's awesome to get to know people just outside of what they're day-to-day -day experience or work is um, getting to know a person is super helpful as well um, a lot of times with jobs and you don't but I think both of my uh, other panel speakers have mentioned this you don't have to tick off all of the boxes but if you're showing that you're somebody that is a go-getter that is uh, able to learn and willing to learn and has a drive to do that a lot of times um, it's totally okay and not all check boxes are must-haves um, uh, yeah, that, that would be kind of my big advice is I'm blanking on uh, a lot of else, but I, I think a lot of the things that I mentioned today in terms of, um, you know, really have a look at the company's uh, website in terms of what they're asking and, and make sure that, you know, if they're asking for a cover letter, you're providing a cover letter that has the right company. I've also seen that. Uh, the wrong company name on there and then if you're asking for the application <laughs> questions make sure you're actually spending some time filling those out they don't need to be essays um, but actually making sure that you're answering those questions and then uh, yeah showing showing the impact that you're making rather than just responsibilities um, whether that's through school projects uh, or through the, the work that you've done. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that, Shreya. And Laura, you've just reminded me that I'm supposed to be planning a career fair for February 2023. So I'll keep you all uh, abreast of uh, upcoming details on that as I as I get that under under planning, um, underway. So 
I just wanted to say it was an absolute pleasure to have you three on the panel today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your, you know, very busy schedules. Um, and uh, and if anyone is looking for work or new opportunities, uh, check out Best Buy, BC Transit, and Thinkific's hiring pages. And if you have, if your companies do have hiring pages, feel free to pop them in the chat here. Um, and then keep your eye out uh, for details on our October 18th hashtag hire me 2022 um, guest speaker panel with another speaker from Best Buy Canada. Um, I'm still looking for two more speakers. So hopefully in the next week or so, I'll be able to announce our full lineup of speakers. And you can check the you can check these panels out at bcjobs.ca slash events um, to register for them. And lastly, you can always shoot me an email uh, with any questions to events at bcjobs.ca. And I put that email in the chat as well as my LinkedIn um, link. And thank you all again for joining us and good luck with the job hunt. I know, you know it takes a bit of time, but hang in there. You'll get a good offer and it will come soon and have a great week. And thank you for joining.